What's up, girl? Girl, I have been learning all the things lately. I feel like a bookworm. Me too. I've never read more books in the last two months than I've uh, the, in well, years. And because we've been kind of chatting about that, about reading books, and there's actually one I want to tell you guys about today. But I, uh, you know, I've had a Goodreads account for forever, um, but I just like don't update it. I read some stuff on my Kindle, some stuff on a physical book. I get some books from the library, but I just wanted to really track what I was reading this year specifically because I'm like, I've already read hmm. so much and I want to like remember this. So I reset up my Goodreads account, like reorganized some stuff and marked off like so many books that I've already read. Wait, so you can yes. track what Oh books my gosh, do you not know about oh. Goodreads? It's no, incredible. It's free. You should sign up for it. And you can connect. Okay. If you have a Kindle, you can connect that. You can connect your Amazon account, whatever. I think it's an Amazon platform. Y'all can correct me if I'm okay. wrong. But you can search for any title that you want. It doesn't matter how you read the book. And you can mark it as currently reading, want to read, or read. And you can rate it. You can review it if you want. I haven't gone that far because I don't have time like that. But I've tracked the <laughs> ones that I have read and that I currently own and want to read. And then the ones that I'm yeah. currently reading. I don't quite use it as a wish list yet because I'm I don't want to get confused. Yeah. Um yeah. But I started doing my wish list is yes, my 100 percent My wish list is my Amazon list. Goodreads is what's currently in my house in your that house. I want to read or sure. am reading. Sure. Um, but I also signed up for it's called Book of the Month. I think it's a book of the month club or just book okay. of the month. And it's like $15.99 a month. And you it's it's non-business related. So I wanted to also start reading again just for fun and getting like out of my head mm -hmm. a little bit. Because reading, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a trauma response, but <laughs> reading was my escape as a child to like not oh, really, be Emily? <laughs> in this life. And I've been needing that kind of escapism again. Um, mm -hmm. and so I signed up for book of the month. It's fifteen ninety nine a month. And they give you, it used to be, they would give you, I think three or five options of books. And if you didn't like any of them, you could skip no big deal. But if you liked one, like you just would select it and it's like free. I mean, you pay for a month, but when you go to select your book, it's like, this is free with your membership. And they mail it to you. And it's a hardcover book for fifteen ninety nine, which is ridiculously inexpensive. Um, I picked my first book of the month club in February, got it. I finished it in a week. It was so good. And March already came. I picked two books. So if you add on more, you get the second one for like cheaper than what you would normally pay, whatever, whatever. And so my March ones are coming and I'm very excited, but all of that to say, I'm going to be reading a lot and I wanted to track it. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I've been seeing, uh, this trend. I don't know. I ended up on book talk and the cutest thing, and it's super corny, but I'm like, mm, do I want to do this? But also, like, I've kind of decided, although I love to craft, if it takes yeah. too long, then it's don't even happening. bother, yeah. Abigail. But essentially, this girl makes a mini I version saw. of a book every time she reads a book, and she puts it in a jar, and it's just the cutest thing yeah. I've ever seen. I think you could easily do that. You would just have to figure out the scale I of... I know. I it would. It'd be very simple. I already mm -hmm. watched a how-to video. But, Maybe you could do it every quarter, my, so you're batching them. Yeah, like I don't want to do it like mm -hmm. one at a time. That would be a big waste of time. But I just kind of like that idea. But for now, I've been stacking them. Although, because I don't, I don't read on a Kindle. I only read physical copies or listen to books. Um, but I don't necessarily own all of them. I do sometimes use the library. So. <sighs> I do want a way to yeah. like visually track what yeah. I've been doing. Um, but nonetheless, the books I've been diving into recently have been really fascinating. So I'm reading one book on OKRs and like setting objectives within a company, but I'm also listening to a book by the co-founder of Netflix about how that company started. Both of the books are primarily based in the late 90s <laughs> and in terms Which of time 100 years ago in the internet world i just i can't even talk about just how different business can you get the names is. of the books so people can yeah so um one of them oh gosh you're putting me on the spot here um i will i'll pull it up um 
But essentially, the thing that I've been fascinated by is just how we forget how different the world was. But I also think, because I'm such a firm believer in pulling on previous business practices. We call old school business so, tactics, yeah. Right. And so I'm like, what about this can I pull mm-hmm. from and like feel really good about or just like step into? But both of these books are very masculine mm-hmm. energy based. Like they're written by men definitely later in life. They've already had a lot mm-hmm. of success. And so I'm interested because I felt this I felt really out of place recently. And I think part of it is because of the way the business is growing. I felt this need to like step into a more masculine like Mm -hmm. place. Um, But I also want to like, how do I do that in my own way? And so anyway, um, the, the Netflix book is called that will never work by Mark Randolph. Um, And I'll have to grab the other book in a second. Um, But it's just been really fascinating. What was the other one? Measure what matters. Is that what you're reading? Yeah. Yes, measure what matters. That's the other book for sure. Um, but th- it's crazy to me how different it is. Um, both they're based in Silicon yeah. Valley. Both are based in like this VC capital world where where people are getting funding for their businesses. And I think Emily and I forget all the time that our business is completely bootstrapped. Like we, Emily and I didn't even put money in. Yeah. To someone, start a friend business. of our, an old client of ours just reached out this a couple weeks ago at this point, And she was like, this might be a personal question. And I said, first of all, I do not believe in personal questions. <laughs> I have no <laughs> sense of boundaries. Um, but she was like, did you guys have any like funding or capital when you started? And I sat there to be like, if you guys have been listening for a long time, you know that my memory lies. And so my gut reaction was like, absolutely not. We've never done that. And I sat and I was like, okay, make sure that this is true before you respond to her. But no, it it was true. <laughs> not to start it. I mean, we've definitely, I'm not going to lie and say like cash flow is always oh, no. perfect. We've, we've taken <laughs> advantage of like SBA yes. things that were offered for COVID yes. relief and and we've taken advantage of a credit line yeah, during the cash flow. Like, don't thing. read that to say that we've been flowing in cash since day one. That's not no. what I mean. So we've definitely like run into tight spots before, um, but we've never like personally been like, oh, I'm going to invest well, fifty grand or hundred grand what was or the whatever. Take- the takeaway you shared with me the other day from that, where it was like all of these companies were like the biggest mistake you can make is if it's your idea and your business is to also use all of your money to fund them. Yeah. They were basically like, don't put your, your ideas at risk alongside your your money. And I I thought that was really interesting because I think so often when for us, but also for many of you listening, if you run a service-based business, especially because of the prices you can charge, you can go into this without necessarily, you don't need money to start. Like, I mean, you could maybe land a client without a website and then pay for the website. Every every step funds the next step kind of thing. Right, exactly. And so I just think most of us are not, we look at the, well, that must be nice kind of uh, businesses out there and think, oh, that's totally different. But you know, to me, it's like, when do you hit a point in your business where you're okay with scaling in a different way? Like, I I think there's different phases. And so I don't know what that means. I'm just like, allowing myself to believe that it's even a possibility, because people do this all the time. And well, um, (laughs) I'm also reading a business book I want to share about. And first, uh, the book I was talking about in my book of the month club that I loved, was called The Golden Couple. If you wanted to check it out, it was really, really good. Um, Not business related whatsoever. A little bit of a thriller, a little bit of a mystery, um, but not scary. Um, So the book I'm reading right now, it's called Love is a Business Strategy. And I love how you described Mm. your books as like being really masculine energy based. And although this one is written by four dudes, um, it is the most non-masculine energy book I've, business book I've I've ever read, especially written by men. Um, And it is, I'm about a quarter of the way through right now. And I have 
four or five pages of a note doc <laughs> filled out because um, I, when I read books like this specifically, and I, I think you do the same thing, but I, I take the notes in the sense of how I want to present the ideas to our team, especially our leadership team. Yeah. Um, this yeah. one is really big on, on the culture of, of love, obviously, but how the question I've kind of asked myself over and over again, especially as we've grown is how do you build a business in love, in ethics and in mm-hmm. standards and in in boundaries and in still hold expectations and i think both i know both of those can coexist and how mm. how does it, how can it look for us and i what i love about the way that we approach stuff like this and this is what i would encourage all of you listening to do is take anything that you're reading listening to learning and run it through your own filter first of like, what do I like about mm-hmm. it? What can I take away from it? And, you know, I think mm-hmm. especially when we, you know, when we watch a training or we buy a program or we invest in something, I think a lot of us, it's it's real, it's second nature to expect every single piece of that to work for us as is. But when mm-hmm. we read a book or listen to a podcast or whatever, we're like, okay, I'm going to take away this one nugget. And I still feel like I like didn't waste my time. I've never, ever mm-hmm. read a book and loved every single thing about it, but right. I don't regret right. the weeks or sometimes months it took me to finish the book. Is it, is the one you're reading like very structured, like think this, do this, do, like, is it tactical? It's, so or- it's, it's set up in the way that I, I love business books to be set up there. Cause there are some that I just cannot read because they're like dry and they're boring. And you're like, it's maybe way too tactful, like, and it's like too structured. Sure. But the way that I love is one part storytelling. And then it follows up with okay. a structured breakdown of how to implement the story. Oh, love that. It's my absolute that. favorite. And this does it really, really well. Yeah, I've read several recently that were very strategy focused. And so it was almost like reading a textbook right. at certain points where you're like, I could kind of yeah. skip through this and like go through it really quickly. The two I mentioned are almost exclusively oh, storytelling. Yeah. And so it, it is it is nice because it it, it I mm-hmm. don't like in my and this is just a a me thing, but I've always struggled with reading for fun, like other topics. So this is a way to like get business story. in, yeah. but it's still story. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm the kind of person who watches Shark Tank on right. purpose, like for right. entertainment. Right. So like I was, I used to really guilt trip myself about only reading business books. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, it's fine. if it's what I like, yeah. it's what I like. Um, not that I couldn't ever find a topic I'm sh- I'm sure if I picked it, it's probably be romance, but let's well, just so, yeah. use your Kindle for romance books. That's my best piece <laughs> of advice for anyone out there. Um, but those are just a couple of things on our bookshelf right now and that we're reading. And we thought we'd share those with you. If you want to check any of them out, yeah. um, definitely head to Amazon or your local library and see what they're about. Um, but I wanted to head into a little bit of a housekeeping corner. We're going to start to do these at the top of the episode. So you guys like get the lay of the land of what's happening right now. Um, you know, sometimes we ask ourselves whether we should do time sensitive information on these episodes, because we know that these live ultimately forever. And well, until we decide to pull them from the interwebs. Um, But you know, that's what we're doing. We're going to decide to do time sensitive information. And so um, if you are listening in the time and space that this was released, uh, there's a couple things I want to draw your attention to. One, have you got your, your ticket to the freedom conference yet? Because it is incredible and it's happening very soon, like in two weeks, two weeks today. Oh, man. So make sure you go to bossproject.com slash conference and grab your ticket. I definitely want to see you there and want to encourage you, especially I we haven't even got to the meat and potatoes of today's topic. But if what we talk about resonates with you, then I know the Freedom Conference is going to be a natural yep. extension um, and going to be a really great opportunity for you to dig in more. Um, I also just wanted to drop in here that if you love listening to the podcast, but you want to like 
maybe watch mm-hmm. occasionally. Um, we are testing something. It's still in this testing mm-hmm. phase. Um, but our marketing assistant has started uploading some of our podcasts as YouTube uh, videos. Um, so we resurrected the Boss Project YouTube <laughs> channel. It, it hadn't been touched years. in years. Brought it back um, from and the we- dead, basically. Yeah, from the dead. Um, so we are testing some things there. So if you're interested in checking that out, definitely go over and yeah. subscribe so that you can get some notifications. I think you'd really enjoy what yeah. we're sharing. Um, and then the last piece of housekeeping law before we dive in is truly, truly, I welcome you. I invite you. I encourage you to keep the conversation going over in our DMs on Instagram. We have opened oh. them up for for many, many, many months now, um, but I'm going to keep saying it because uh, we're in there and our amazing client concierge, Katie, hangs out in our DMs and the Boss Project team is there. And we know that sometimes being overwhelmed at the next step that you need to take in your business or getting a second yeah. view, a, an, an unbiased perspective of where you're headed or where you're at or getting recommended the next resources for what you might need to focus on right now. It can be overwhelming. There's a lot out there, you know, now more than ever, there's more noise than literally ever before. And so if you need help either finding an old episode or reading a blog post or truly understanding what it's like to work with us or, you know, what phase of the business that you're at and what's the next step that we recommend for you. Um, we're having those actual real conversations with y'all over in Instagram, in our DM. So head over to boss project on Instagram, click follow, click, send us a message and introduce yourself, start the conversation. It's our absolute favorite thing to do. And I just like, you're not bugging us. You, you may think that like, yeah. because we have m- literal millions of listeners on this show that like our inbox is absolutely flooded. Is it busy? Yes. But we like, it's part of our job to hang out there and have conversations with you. And it's our absolute favorite thing to do. It's something that we decided very intentionally to integrate back into our business model last year because we missed having the conversations and Honestly, yeah. y'all like feel like our friends and like when we get to know you and and get to know your business and your goals. And so we love our absolute favorite thing to do is brainstorm and and give solicited feedback. And so that enables us to do that even more. So go say hello today and let's get chatting. Yeah. So let's talk more about services. I I think there's this um era or like air, like not era, like, um, uh, mist. <laughs> uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This, um, oh, oh, do you know what I'm saying? There's like something in the this, air, there's a vibe, there's, there's some, energies. Sure. There, sure. 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 I mean, that's not the word I'm going for, but yes. There's smell. Um, there's something in the air. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but there's something in the air that I feel like there's a lot of people questioning yeah everything about themselves and their business. And I, if I were to just put a pin on why I think <laughs> this is happening, um, I don't know if you've realized, but we've been in a global pandemic for two years and potentially we're going into a world war. I'm not talking about that today, <sighs> but, those but are facts. it does it does make you a little uneasy and it does make you question some things. And because of that, I've seen a lot of service providers consider mm-hmm. a pivot. They're like considering, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if I change this about myself? What if I add this stream of revenue to my business? What could happen? What will well, happen? They've hit um, the time and income ceiling. And yeah, that's we've talked about the about. levers that you can pull to adjust those, but some of you are a little bit further down this um, mental um, rabbit hole right? Of like, it's still Mm -hmm. drastically entertaining alternative ideas. And I think a lot of you who have come, especially into this space, because it is so full of marketing conversations and marketing strategy, that stuff feels sexy and fun. And, and I get the allure. I, I do. And I also want to really have a conversation with you about facts and reality Mm -hmm. And, and the facts and mm-hmm. reality starting with, with what you actually want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what do you want? What are you looking for? And I, I, I think it's important that instead of looking around to figure out what you want, this is where it's really critical that you shut things off. Like, 
I remember <laughs> Emily and I looked at each other. Uh, this was a couple of years ago, but we were like, what would happen if we just like stopped looking yeah. around? Like we just like really ignored <laughs> the, mm-hmm. everything and what would happen? Um, but I think so much of creating that self-reflection opportunity where you're not following as many businesses like you, where you're not engaging with as many thought leaders, but really kind of narrowing down who you let into your, your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, and when that happened, it became a lot more clear of, I am still always open to new yeah. ideas and I will still see things and be like, Ooh, I wonder if I like try that on what it would be like. Um, but because we've created a more filtered mm-hmm. worldview, I feel like you and I are so much better now at maybe, maybe entertaining something, but like changing our mind more quickly or like making an adjustment. Well, to it's make like our, what I was talking about own. with the books of like, you take the idea in and then the first thing it has to do is run through your own filter first. Yeah. And that's no different from not only taking in business and marketing strategies, but also like truly deciding the type of, of business you want to run, how you want to show up every day, what you want to be doing every day. And I, you know, I feel like there's this there's been this conversation going on. We, we aren't the first ones to talk about it. You've heard it before. It's not new, um, but it's a little bit of the like shamey guilt trip of service providers feeling bad for still doing service work. Yeah, why? <laughs> what do you mean you haven't pivoted to sell to 8 million people instead? Like that's, that's like the next phase. That's after you've been doing this for a certain amount of time and you've hit the ceiling, that's like your obvious next step. And there's just this big missed opportunity. It's just it's not though. though. It's just <laughs> not. It's just not. It's uh, what I want people to understand. And, and if you want to have this conversation with us, happy, send us a DM. I would love to figure it out for you because I do think there's yes, nuances. With everything. But with everything. Um, but if you're considering like making changes, what I don't think most people realize is any change in product, regardless of what the product is, like a service, a a program, a course, a digital thing, like regardless of the deliverable, any change in product dramatically affects your business and enough variation away from your current offer. And all of a sudden you are building a new business. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you may not have a new name. You may not have a new website. You may not have a new social media account, but the uphill battle you will Mm -hmm. face because it's so dramatically a far away from where you're at yeah. right now is, is that you you have to start over in a lot of ways. And I think a lot of people think there's a much smoother transition and there's just there's, not for any there product just isn't. changes. Um, you know, because the reality being, especially, you know, if, if you've built a service-based business where you have developed an expertise in an arena and you have a done for you service, right? Where you are, mm-hmm. you are doing the things for the client, you're implementing the work for the client and you're working really intimately one-on-one with people The the problem is, is when you hit the time and ceiling capacity, you think that doing the work is the time suck. And that if you just right. don't do the work for as many people or you don't do as much work for the clients, then obviously then you should scale. And I understand that concept. Like part of you doing yeah. the work is the time suck. I'm not arguing with you there, but we're looking at the wrong solution to the the actual problem. And so what happens is, is like what Abby's talking about is like, okay, if, if we're going to sit here and say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of doing bookkeeping. I'm tired of doing all of the bookkeeping for the clients. I would rather just teach people how to do their own books. The people who've already hired you to do their books, they, they don't want to do their own books. That's why they hired you. And so that what mm-hmm. happens is what we're saying is an entirely new different business is built, an entirely new audience is having to be talked to and be served and now be nurtured in a different way. And so all of the things that have worked for sometimes years for you that you've built up, when those could have been pivoted slightly to reignite and refine, 
we're now starting from scratch over here. Oh, Ask us how we know. Because we did this. Just, oh, we have done this. We've done it a couple of times, actually. And I feel like we had to learn our lesson. This is one times. of the biggest, like, oh my gosh, I want to drill in this lesson to so many service providers because, and I've mentioned this before a little bit in a couple different capacities on this show, but yes, we've made this pivot multiple times, but the the initial one is what matters the most because it's the, it's the change from, nope, we're not doing this, meaning the done for you services oh, yeah. to we're doing this. And then once we pivoted to over here, there were, there were different pivots to continue that, to keep going. What I'm not saying is that you won't ever pivot. What I'm not saying is that right. there will never be tweaks that you need to make to your pricing or your client or your offer or your model. What I am saying is there's a difference between like this, like a small turn and and a, a dramatic rebuild. There is a difference. Yeah. 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 It's not always going back to the drawing board. Like put your blowtorch away. And I... I, I miss, I mentioned this because I just think it's an analogy that you'll understand. Emily's like, oh God, here we <laughs> go with an analogy. Coffee filter, lick the beans. No, no. I'm actually going to talk I about knew, cars. I was, if you had let me cars. keep talking, I was going to go hamburgers and then cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, okay. In the grand scheme of things, how long have cars been cars? They've always been cars. Stop. Right now. Okay. No, for real. Okay. But every time the automobile industry no, has I'm evolved. Cars been cars. They've always been cars. <laughs> Stop it. You know exactly what I'm saying. It started as a buggy with a simple little engine and then they refined it. And then we fucking drove around the world without seatbelts. And then we decided, oh, we should maybe add some safety features. We added some features to the vehicle to make it more safe. We've, we've improved fuel efficiency. We've, we've changed the way it's powered, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. but so I am, you know, I'm with you. Still, but I'm it's still a fucking <laughs> car. Okay. You can change the packaging. You can change the shell of it, but like the nuts and bolts of it are the same. The, the, the theories behind it are the same. The, the things that go into it are relatively the same. We're just like iterating mm -hmm. and improving on and there are people and, who offer low end um, cars and high end cars and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like with your service, it's like it's like you started God, here I go with the no. <laughs> It's like you started an ice cream shop and now you want to build an auto repair center. Like it's like you're literally like they're not at all the same. Like I see, not only do I see people changing from like the delivery mm -hmm. changes, like it's no longer a done for you. And now it's one to many, but it's also like the thematically completely yeah. different or, or like not even for the same ideal client. I mean, at least someone who buys ice cream probably gets their car repaired every once in a while. But like some of you guys are literally selling something to like the, the same person would never right. buy both. Right. And that's <clears throat> a problem because the people you've built into your world are naturally not only your potential, like it's easier to re get the same client to, to re, re get is not the right word to have the same client work yeah, with you sure. again mm -hmm. on a new mm -hmm. service. Um, it's easier to re ignite that relationship mm -hmm. and work together again than it is to go find a new client. Also, the clients you worked with in the past tend to know more people like yeah. themselves and they're more likely to refer you to um, amazing potential referrals. But if you're completely changing who mm -hmm. it's for, then those referrals are no longer right. helpful. And, and like, why are you making this so much more complicated yeah. than it needs to be? Let's talk about this from a client standpoint. So yeah, let's do it. I I feel the shift started a, a couple years ago, but it's getting a little bit louder. Where season business has seasonality, regardless of what you offer, mm -hmm. and I think being attuned yeah. to what are people really wanting it is important, and it's a skill that I do recommend that you strengthen. And there are some things that are just like 
they're just not going away anytime soon. People still need things yeah. done for them. Like regardless of what the industry is or the niche is, maybe sometimes like technology advances and like the thing that you used to do for people, like just literally doesn't make sense or exist anymore, but you can still, the act of servicing and, and helping clients in an intimate way that that's not disappearing anytime soon. Um, you could think I, I could name a million industries right now where there are done for you services, a part of their business model and the big part of their business model. Yeah. Like even if you were to look at like website design over right. the last 15 years, <clears throat> you know, 15 years ago, that might have meant hand coding every aspect. And then, and then, you know, Squarespace came on the, the market and WordPress was out there. And th so you could start to develop these templates or, or at least start from mm -hmm. a base. And now it is so easy to build things so quickly that maybe the things you're offering are tweaked. Like maybe you're doing something that's more advanced for like an e-commerce right. client and building something on Shopify, or you are including more aspects of it since the design part is easier. Maybe you're including copy or right. photography, but like the overall offer is still, the evolution. still relatively the same, right? It's still a yeah. website. Like you, you may have to like evolve with the technology, evolve with right. the time. But, but there you're are not... always going to be a group of people who want that to be done for them, period. Yes. And I think that we have discounted that those people exist. And I think in the last couple of years, that group has grown even more. I think we are in the sense of understanding our priorities and reprioritizing things in our life and how we spend our time. A lot of us, when we can, are investing in people and solutions to solve things for us instead of us having to DIY it. And I understand the mental headspace, especially if you're in like the marketing space of learning, it's really easy to think that like you have to DIY everything. So why wouldn't someone else? But the reality is, is that there is, there is a large market in my opinion, and in, in that we're seeing even with our clients and our audience of people who are paying good money to have done for you services integrated into their life and business. And there aren't enough service providers offering those solutions. Nope. Nope. It's like, it's literally, in my opinion, a lot like the mm -hmm. housing market. Like there's, there's not enough houses right. being built. So the, the housing market is crazy. The, the same is true in the services industry. There's not enough service providers. And so some of these people are getting booked out for a mm -hmm. year yep. in advance. Like there are not enough service crazy. providers offering done for you services. I would argue no, that correct. there are service, pro service providers out there who think that they are eligible for those positions and you're not because you're not serving them. Right. You're, you're creating it a bit to... How do I put this kindly? It's a bit too surfacy. Like you're kind of like you're just like barely getting into it. And if you went all in with your clients and really did significant work for for yep. them, not just with them, um, I think you would be absolutely shocked. Because here's the thing. Because of the pandemic and because of a million and the other reasons, we're all just so tired. And, and because of that, we we shifted priorities. But I also th think we are more aware of the things we are actually naturally mm -hmm. good at. And so you have an audience of people who are like, hmm, I think I need to stick to this like bubble yep. of things. I can do that and I can do that well. If it's anything outside of that, I need help. Like people literally who spent... People started buying groceries and having them delivered because they didn't want to go yeah, do. We started that during the, the pandemic, anymore. and we still do that because we realize we hate doing it. <laughs> right, but but you would be. I think you're just ignoring that there's this giant group of people that want you to do the work. And okay, so maybe you're like, I hear you, I get it, but like I'm <laughs> tired too, and I don't want to do all of mm -hmm. the things. Okay. Fantastic. I can help you with that because I, I know that there's so many systems that can back you up. I have true yep. confidence in our ability to help you package this up in a way that's efficient for you. Um, but also, in my opinion, a lot of you would be way more willing mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do the work if you were getting paid mm -hmm. appropriately for the work yep. you're doing. 
instead of being taken advantage of. And I, I think if you were getting paid what I know you can get paid if you market in a certain way, if you package in a certain way, if you're really clear with your messaging in a certain way, I think you'd be like, oh, damn, I will do mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. all day long. Oh, like the, the result, one of our clients got like 180 sixing her <laughs> revenue from the year prior, increasing it by 180%. Yeah, she, she almost 186% increase in three mm-hmm. months. Like it was it nearly doubled her entire con- like contracted amount in three months, like is absolutely mind-boggling but most of that was not new business it was None simply renegotiations now i think she a, got a couple. couple clients but like it, it was it's insane to me how how much you're discrediting the people that are already yes. in your circle yes already in your connections um, clients are already literally break with. exactly how break down exactly how she did that and the timeline in our conference that you can snag your ticket yeah. to for just $47. We re- like literally break down the timeline and lessons learned and tips uh, from implementing what we helped her do inside the incubator um, inside the freedom conference. So snag your ticket. Yeah. Bossproject.com mm-hmm. slash conference, by the way. Yeah. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. honestly really excited to see a new wave of service-based business owners coming in with concierge, premium VIP service. Not only does it feel so full circle from how we started and the boutique marketing agency that we had for years and the way that we served clients, which was like truly next level. Um, I'm basically teaching everything I wish I would have told myself in 2016. (laughs) So you're getting Mm -hmm. the lessons learned now. So you can choose Mm -hmm. not to pivot if you don't want to. I think ultimately the our philosophy is it's up to you. You you get to decide. If you want to pivot and talk to a whole new round of people and have different challenges and goals in your life and business, like do that. If that part sounds enticing to you and you're absolutely on the brink of burnout and like this is not even something you want to entertain, I absolutely get that. I've been there. My handle, my mental headspace was there. And if I, I know that if I had someone sharing like what we're talking about to just show me an, a different option, to just show me mm-hmm. what it could look like with a couple small tweaks instead of a complete rebuild. To show me, okay, if these are the pieces that you don't like about what you're doing now, here's how we can change just that instead of changing everything. I, I might have entertained it a little bit more. I might have gone about growing our business in a different way. And so all I'm offering for you is, is an invitation to see a different path. And to try mm-hmm. something else on for size when you don't have to completely burn it all down. You don't. You don't have to burn it all down. And and I I think the clients that we've seen have the most success were truly in the like cash flow is a problem because they're getting underpaid, but they're overbooked and they couldn't possibly add the another client of doom without is what adding we call more it. help. So without <laughs> adding more help, um, but they can't afford more help because they have cash flow problems because they're not charging enough. Yep. And you're just like, and in this like cycle that you can't get out of. But the thing is, we have ways to like break those chains and like get you free yep. from that, which is why it's literally mm. called the Freedom Conference. Clever. <laughs> Um, but I, I want you to feel like you're not alone in this. And I, a lot of this comes down to the voices you can hear. And the reason you may feel like, oh, this is going away. People are just teaching more. People are just, it's because of the bubble you've inserted yourself into, not Mm -hmm. because that's what your clients are seeing or wanting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or needing like in the same way i think you guys are if you're a tiktok like (laughs) in in bed swiper i think you guys are aware at this point that your tiktok experience is like incredibly different than your friends and your family well the same is true for your ideal clients but not just on tiktok literally everywhere and so uh, you you get these blinders on thinking oh this is all they're seeing no, that's why advertising feels so targeted. <laughs> yeah, 
because yeah. it is like <laughs> like uh, advertising even with all the changes um with facebook even if you decide to not quote unquote get tracked and all the things it, it it's anticipatory mm-hmm. at this point artificial intelligence is predicting your future based on past behavior based on past credit card history based on past search history like the the cloud or whatever you want to call it knows more about you than I think you know about yourself (laughs) half the time but I also want you to realize that everyone else's version of reality is just not the same and so I think so often we convince ourselves that this is the only path because we can't even see that there are other options and I want to invite you to entertain what a simpler option, what an easier option, what a smaller tweet could look like that could dramatically change uh, everything for you. So again, I just want to invite you to join us at the Freedom Conference. This is going to be where we entertain what it looks like to really amp up your done for your services, get paid adequately, and get out of that cycle of doom we just hinted at. Uh, so go grab your ticket at bossproject.com conference.